These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. What's the fundamental equation for working with resistors? Our T equation for resistors is Ohm's law. V equals IR. That means that there's three main variables when we're working with the resistor. The three main variables for a resistor are the voltage drop, the current, and the resistance. The three variables in Ohm's law. There's two main variables for a battery or a power source. The two main variables for a battery or a power source are V and I. Now this is not a voltage drop, it's a voltage source. There's the voltage source from the battery and there's the current delivered by the battery. Technically speaking, the battery doesn't have a resistance, right? So technically speaking, we wouldn't talk about the resistance of the battery, although sometimes people talk about the equivalent resistance that per that's perceived by the battery. But that's still not really a, a property of the battery. So these are our main variables for the battery. But what's our key equation for capacitors? Or what are our key variables for capacitors? Do you remember what the key equation is for capacitors or the variables? Obviously, a capacitor doesn't have a resistance, so. Um, is it C equals? Is it IV? No. I think you might be confusing two different formulas there. There's a formula that says power is I times V. We can look at that later, maybe. The key formula for capacitors is Q equals C. This is an important formula. You get to use a cheat sheet, right? This is an important formula to make sure you have in your cheat sheet. This really, you could think of this almost like Ohm's law for capacitors. This plays the same role for capacitors that Ohm's law plays for resistors. Almost any problem about capacitors, we're going to have to use this equation. Do you remember what Q stands for? That's the charge. Do you remember what the units are for Q then, for charge? The, um, good. That's good that you remember that. <laughs> what does capital C stand for? The capacitance. That's the capacitance. Now, a lot of people don't remember the units for capacitance. I don't know if you remember those. Those would be farads. As I think you know, I think one of the most important things a student can do is learn the units for each concept. You should put this in your cheat sheet, but you should also really just have, try to also memorize the units. Well, the unit for capacitance is farads, capital F. The capacitance is a physical characteristic of the capacitor. It's analogous to the resistance for a resistor. Just like the resistance is a physical characteristic of the resistor that tells you what type of resistor it is, the capacitance is that physical characteristic of the capacitor that tells you what type of capacitor it is. The physical what? A physical characteristic is just something that it, it comes from the way the capacitor is built. Okay. The significance of that is if I change something else in the circuit, that's not going to change the resistance of this resistor because that's a physical characteristic. Well, if I change something else in the circuit, that's not going to change the capacitance of this capacitor either. It might change the Q or the V. Changing other things in the circuit can change Q or V or R, but they're not going to change resistances and capacitances because those are just physical characteristics of the shape of the resistor or the capacitor. And what does the capital V stand for? Voltage. The voltage. A capacitor can either be a voltage source or a voltage drop. So V here stands for the voltage source or the voltage drop. And what are the units for that? That was almost a trick question. The units are volts. Okay, yeah. <laughs> However, it's very important to know what the component units of a volt are. So that the charge are really positive? We could figure that out. We could just figure it out from this equation. We could say that volts must be coulombs over farads. That doesn't turn out to be too helpful, however. Earlier in the semester, we learned what a volt was. We learned what the component units of a volt. We saw that volts are joules per coulomb. 
energy per charge. Unfortunately, most students never really learn what a volt is, but that makes it really hard to solve problems about volts. Volts are joules per coulombs. about a capacitor is that the voltage cannot jump. A capacitor resists jumps in voltage. A capacitor resists jumps in voltage. It takes time for the voltage to change. It takes time for the voltage across a capacitor to change. Why does it take time? Well, notice the only way to change the voltage is to deliver current to the capacitor. Well, it takes time for current to show up at the capacitor. So it takes time for the voltage to change. From this equation, we can see that the only way to change the voltage is by laboriously piling up charge. Remember that we can think of the capacitor almost like a dam that's damming up the positive charges. Well, it takes time for those charges to accumulate and for the voltage to change. The voltage can't just jump to a certain level because we can't just suddenly materialize a whole bunch of charges. Let's say that we start with this circuit open and no charge here, no charge on the capacitor. That would put us here on the graph. The charge is done at zero. Now at time zero, we're going to close the switch. At time zero, we're going to close the switch. And we're going to ask, what's going to be the effect of that on the charge that's accumulated on the capacitor? Well, when we close the switch, current is going to start flowing through the circuit. Is the current going to be flowing clockwise or counterclockwise? Um, clockwise. We know that this longer line here represents the positive terminal. And we know that we imagine that the current is positive charges. Well, positive charges would move away from the positive terminal and towards the negative terminal. This arrow represents the movement of the current. What's going to happen to those positive charges when they reach this plate over here? They're going to accumulate on this plate. Remember that the capacitor is like a dam. The positive charges can't pass through. We'll accumulate more and more positive charges on the top plate. Well, that's going to force the positive charges away from the bottom plate. The positive charges in the bottom plate are going to be repelled, and that's going to cause a current to move through the last half of the circuit. So we really will have a loop of current flowing through. Even though charges can't physically go through this gap, the charge in the top half of the loop is going to induce, so to speak, a current in the bottom half. And remember that these are positive charges that are meet, losing, leaving this bottom half. So the bottom half should end up negative. We know that what happens in a capacitor is we have an equal separation of charges. If there was positive 5 coulombs on the top plate, you'd end up with negative 5 coulombs on the bottom plate. So is the point of the capacitor just to store these charges? Yes. Like a dam stores water. It's to store the charges. Now let's see what our graph is going to look like. Well, originally there was zero charge. However, there's going to be a steady stream of charges moving through this circuit towards the capacitor. So the charge will increase like this. However, there's a maximum. There's a maximum amount of charge that we can store in the capacitor, just like there might be a maximum amount of water that we can pile up behind a dam. The amount of charge is going to approach this maximum asymptotically. We might not ever get there exactly, but we'll approach asymptotically. 
So what's going to be happening to the voltage across the capacitor? Well, at this point over here, when there was no charge on the capacitor, what was the voltage across the capacitor? Um, if there was no voltage, then... When there was no charge, what was the voltage across the capacitor? Because zero Q means zero V. And then eventually, when we closed the circuit, charge started accumulating on the capacitor. Well, what would have been happening to the voltage during that time? You can, that's good. You can see from this equation that the voltage and the charge are proportional. So we can actually use the same graph to show the shape of both the voltage and the charge. They wouldn't have the same numerical values, but the voltage and the charge will both be asymptotically approaching the maximum. 